Well, hi, this is Custom Works, and I'm Clint Allen. Today we're going to be going through the rebuild of a oil cooler, the 7.3 Power Stroke oil cooler. All the way from the beginning, all the way through to the end. You're going to see some stuff you probably have never seen before on the gazillions of videos that are out there. Stick around and see if there's something you didn't even know about. And if you're new here and you just found this video or you just joined our community, down in the description is going to be a complete playlist of the almost finished sensor videos, all the sensors that are on a 7.3. Also, our Tech Talk videos, there's going to be a complete line of those, and our regular tech videos and some other popular videos, all down in the description, easy for you to find. So enjoy. So what we're talking about is the oil cooler, and for any of you that are not in the know, I understand I'm talking to a lot of experienced individuals here, but bear with me, there's some that don't know. This right here is the oil cooler. This takes oil from the low pressure oil pump, feeds it on through here, goes through the oil filter up into the motor. The whole concept here is when the engine is cold, it helps heat up the oil. And when the engine is hot and under load or stress, it cools the oil down so it doesn't turn into a big chunk of tar by boiling off. So we've got in here five bolts grand total. We got two tens up in front. We've got two tens in the back. So to explain this a little bit more in depth before somebody jumps on the comments, I say that there's two number 10s right here, two 10 bolts. There is a third one here. Now, this right here is key. Pay attention to the video of what I want you to do with this third one. It is crucial so you don't end up breaking anything. So back to the video. So those are the sockets or wrenches that you're going to need. First thing that you are going to do, since I'm working with the cab off, and before anybody jumps into the comments, which they have before, you know, <laughs> even though we explain this, this is for your benefit to be able to see firsthand instead of somebody in their driveway with a cell phone trying to take a video from underneath. This way you can get a very good look at what is going on. We will explain as we go how to remove stuff, taking into consideration that the cab is on. But first things first, <clears throat> empty the radiator. Good time for you to do a flush and to put in brand new fluid. But either which way, you'll need to empty the radiator. Now there is on the block, and I'm not going to show it, just from experience, I know it's a waste of time, but both on the block and through the, the heater, you could remove that and drain out all of the fluid. Basically, it's gonna end up being a mess anyways, so just drain your radiator. Also, good time to change the oil when you do this also. Go ahead, drop the oil. Go ahead also, remove the oil filter. From there, we're going to start removing this and I'm going to show you how to remove the block heater and that looks like that. Real simple. Now some of the older ones have a screw on it that you turn not likely you're going to run into it, but you just unscrew it with a pliers just to get it started or a wrench. It's just easier with the pliers and unscrew it, but most of them are going to be like this. So all you're going to do is just pry it a little bit on one side, kind of pull it back, go pry on the other side, 
pull it back and then just pull it on out. So just as simple as this. She's on there loose. Just pull it back a little bit. Tab on the other side. Just pull it back a little bit. And off she comes. Simple as that, that's what that looks like. Just let that rest. Just make sure you don't smack it or anything like that. So right here we are at the front of the engine and you're going to be coming up from down here. You can also reach across through here, but that's a bit of a pain in the butt, but you can be done. But it's easier if you just come through here. Now these come out first. And of course what we want to do, put them in a bag, put them in a can. Why? That way if you're working and you accidentally hit them and they go rolling off, that way, this way you can keep an eye on them and they're all together, all in one. So now we're behind the engine driver's side and this is the danger area. This is where we want you to pay a little bit closer attention. This right here is what we're looking at. So what we want to make sure that we do here is remove this bolt, remove that bolt, and this is the last one right here that we want to remove. So we've left this one for last, and the reason why we leave this particular one for last is because it's easiest to get at. We want to be able to grab right here, and yes, I know you're working underneath the truck, but this is where two hands are going to come into play. And then pull it on out this way right here. Out and underneath. And we've got her out. So here we go, we've got her out. Now is the time to clean it up. Don't take it apart yet. I assure you, it's much more easier to clean it up while it's together instead of taking it apart and de dealing with little parts. If you just get some uh, purple power uh, times two, 50-50 with water, put it in a tub, go after it then with a plastic bristle brush. That's the absolute perfect way at this point to get it all cleaned up easily. Next, let's take it apart. So this is one of the ways to uh, get it apart. Soft blow hammer only. Do not take a mallet hammer or anything like that to this. You'll risk breaking it. Boom. Second way of doing it. Oh. 
voila. All right, we got her apart. As you can see, this is a messy situation, so be prepared to have your favorite oil cleanup rags or cat litter or whatever you want to use. But either which way, we've got a black o-ring right here. That comes right off. If you notice, the black o-ring is uh, MIA. Make sure you look inside and get the o-rings out. Real simple. Get them all pulled out of there. All right, next, the o-rings that are on the inside. Now, if you never worked on injectors, you, you might not know what I'm talking about, but when you're pulling off o-rings off of an injector, you don't want to be reaching in there with a knife or anything that's going to actually score, scrape, or gouge the injector. We want to treat this the same exact way. So get underneath there, just hit it like that. Oops. And hit it like that. And there we go, we got her all taken apart. Now this is a second part of the stage of the game where we want to clean again. So now go through, use the same purple cleaner, soft brush, brass brush, go after it, clean it on up. On the inside here, we do not want to go after that with any Scotch-Brite, anything that's caustic, anything that's going to cause that inside of the housing to get scratched, gouged. You got to be careful here. So get that all cleaned up. Obviously go ahead get this all cleaned up. Same warning in here. Same warning out here. Do not scratch, scuff, or anything like that. Same thing right here. Do not do that here. And we'll move back to the table. All right, so if you've gone through and cleaned the cooler up twice, like I have mentioned, this is what separates my channel from the guys that are making videos in their driveway with their cell phones. We ain't even close to being done cleaning yet. Now in preparation, I've gone through and sandblasted this. Now I'm not suggesting you sandblast it or, or anything. However you want to do, however you want to leave this, is that's up to you. I did sandblast this portion right here I did uh, use some etching primer. I did sand that. And then what I used for paint to protect, protect this from any future rusting, or at least you know rust for the few years, is uh, Duplicolor or Rust-Oleum wheel paint. That stuff is absolutely phenomenal. It sticks, it's good for high heat. It does a really good job preserving and keeping stuff from rusting. You don't have to do that. Just a suggestion. These ports right here. Boom! <laughs> Wasn't quite happy with that little segment that I was just discussing. Wanted to come back to it and give a better description and, and a better idea of what I want you to do here. Take purple cleaner, the purple power, or if you like the natural cleaner, the green cleaner, either which way, and pour it right in here. Set it down, 
port right in here and, and leave it set for about a half an hour while you're doing other things. Get this just like in the air to air video. Get this cleaned out really good. All the gunk and slime and everything that goes through the system. Get this nicely cleaned out so it's doing a nice cooling job again. Make sure there isn't any crud in there. So soak it for about a half an hour with those two types of cleaner. Pour it on out and then, you know, while the wife is doing something else, get into the kitchen and turn the old hot water on in the uh, sink and uh, completely flush it out really good. Get everything out of there. And then uh, we'll move on to where I was on how to clean these. On the inside here, this, this is probably the most crucial. You gotta make sure that you put this up into the light and make sure that every tube that goes through here is completely clean, doesn't have any crud in it. And how you can do that is several different ways. You can find yourself a nice wire and just let her go all the way through. You can also take some stiffer 12 volt wire, get that in there, run her all the way through. Either which way, make sure that that's clean. No use in throwing new O-rings on, no use in doing this if that's still going to be dirty on the inside. Then and then we can go through, find my gloves, So after you've run your wire through there, you've looked through the light, it's still going to be a bit scummy in there. Then you can go through with your brake clean and give it a spray. See how that comes out of there? That's not blocked. Now do it at an angle so if it splashes back at you, it doesn't hit you in the face. And then hit each one of these every hole, get it break cleaned out. What will happen is, is that if there's something clogged inside, it'll end up spraying back right through here. And if you're doing one of these and get hit in the face with it, if you watch my other videos, you'll learn that uh, this is dangerous stuff right here. Break clean can really mess you up. So get that all cleaned out. Next on the list, I'm going to start putting our O-rings on. Now I'm really critical about getting Ford OEM parts or reputable diesel parts. This right here, most manufacturers is gonna be just fine. I would still prefer if you went to like Riff Raff Diesel, very good place to deal with. Got them from there or got them from Ford. But in my experience, this Molly brand also does a great fantastic job as well. Once again, not quite that finicky. Now several channels of guys making videos in their driveway or whatever the case may be with their cell phone will suggest to you to use oil, regular engine oil, use Vaseline, to help in aiding sliding the O-rings on. 
do not do that. This right here is O-ring lube. I'll put it down in the description below. Use O-ring lube. It is designed for doing this. Get a little on there. We don't have to hose her down. Get a drop on here. Spread it all around. Slide it on over. When you slide it on over, make sure that you don't curl this. Make sure it's sitting on here, uncurled. Put that one on. Second one, and second one, and we'll put her together. Same thing. Get a drop in there. Same thing over here, just a little drop. And we'll slide her back together. Now, if you've watched or you watch in the future, people who are taking this apart and they're like, oh, you, you, you gotta put a mark here and then you gotta put a mark here in order for you to put it back together right. It makes no difference. These can go on any way, doesn't make a difference in the entire world. The only thing that we do want to do is make sure this pin lines up right here. With that square little alignment. Rubber mallet. And we got her in place. Now, once again, if you want to go through and use a clamp on each side and suck them together, more power to you. If you want to go ahead and use something like this, more power to you. This right here works just fine. Long as you're using the mallet that I have told you to use. Next on the list to clean up, as you can see here, the gasket stayed attached. And she's on there, my goodness. There we go. Let's get in here, get this cleaned up. Let's not get debris inside the block. Let's get a little bit of paper in there. Oh, 
all the excess goo that you've got floating around. Now is a good time. Get her scraped off. You want that gasket to, to set in there. You'll notice that the block is inset. Everything's got to fit in here in a specific way. And if it's not clean, you're going to have a leak. Come in with your Scotch Bright scuff pad. Get her nicely cleaned up. And get the rest of the residue off. So we have a nice clean surface. Make sure you remove your plugs that you had in there so debris didn't get into the inside. Do the same thing on the front pad. And this part of it is done and ready for installation and I'll show you what to do with the gasket. So with the gaskets, because you're working underneath the vehicle, and it can be a bit of a bear. We've got a radiator that you had to get all the fluid out of and out of the block. You drop the oil. She's going to be a long day. Do something to make life a little bit simpler. Get the surfaces cleaned with your brake clean and then go through and use the Permatex uh, high tech gasket sealant and that is 80062. I'll put it in the description. Put it on both the gasket and the oil cooler. Leave it set for about, you know, it depends on heat, read the directions, but it depends how hot or cold it is. Leave the two sit apart, and that way you'll be able to go underneath the truck and fart around, and you don't have to worry about losing your gaskets or your gaskets being out of place. I have seen several situations where people have done this, and then you get the phone call or you get the email or you get the comment through YouTube and they're like, well, geez, I just did this and it's leaking. Well, if this slides out of place because you're trying to fart around sliding it in and then trying to get your bolts in and the gasket isn't setting in the correct place or you accidentally kind of push it aside, which I have seen that on several occasions, and then they go ahead and they run it on in there and they tighten it on up and they're not really paying attention because, you know, for whatever reason, gasket sets off center, they tighten it up. Not only is it going to leak, but high chances are you're going to actually break the aluminum, whether it be on here or on the engine. Then you've got a big job. You're going to have to go through and pull off if you, if you break the aluminum on the timing cover, that's a big job. Not a difficult job, but a big job, and you will be throwing wrenches if you make that mistake. Save yourself the problem and use some high tech on there. It's designed for it. You will get done with the job after doing this and say, hey, you know, thank you very much, Clint. So let's go put it on. So I mentioned when this all started in the beginning that if you wanted to drain the block all the way down from the bottom and once again I, I feel it's a waste of time because it's still, still going to make a mess but if you want to see if I can get in here so the light doesn't get blocked but right there you can remove that right there and that'll actually drain the block out. 
and I'm going to bring in the oil cooler. You can see the benefit right now of putting the uh, gasket tack on. The other second place would be right here. That's a number 11, and you can drain it from there as well. But we're going to go in reverse here. Get everything in finger tight. So on real low pressure, if you're going to use air tools, real low pressure, just, uh, you know, we don't want to run these home because we want to torque them. <laughs> All right, and the torque value is going to be 18 foot-pounds. Uh, basically, that works out to 216 inch-pounds. Got a click. Remember, start with that one bolt. Click. Click. Got a click. And we're going to need an extension for that. Extension obtained. And click. All right, long video, you bet. That is the proper way to do an oil cooler. The rest of it, obviously, you need to go through, refill up the radiator, get it burped. The oil, go ahead and get that changed out. When you fire it up, it's going to be a little unhappy because you're going to have all that air being ran through so expect to be a little bit bucky when it first starts up and starts running not like bucky when you do the injectors but it's going to be a little unhappy for a short period of time i've had a couple times every once in a while you fire it up because of all the air that's in here and the oil that pushes through it quits out just give it 30 seconds turn the ignition on, wait for the glow plug to go out, fire it. That should be more than what you need. Um, never had it quit out a second time, but either which way, just so you are aware. And the last uh, but not least here, uh, care for your tools. If you're using torque wrenches, I don't care if they're the cheap ones from uh, China or good high quality ones, just so you're in the know after you get done using them always go through and put them down to zero so there's no pressure on it make sure that it's all loose that way these will last you forever so i hope you have learned something today and you take it easy and you have a good day
You're still here yet? It's over. Oh, I know. Go ahead, hit the subscribe button, the little bell, you know, the little bell, and that'll tell you every time I post a new video. Also go root around in my previous videos and you'll find a lot of interesting content. Until then, go home. Oh, oh yeah, the garbage can's over there. You know, don't be making a mess. You know, clean up after yourself. Go, go.